Our next speaker is a mathematical epidemiologist, a healthcare analyst, a STEM education advocate, and a lifetime SACNIS member. She has more than 16 years of experience in research, data analysis, and coding, and establishes partnerships with public health agencies to implement countrywide and statewide health promotion. Dr. Omara Ortega. Hello, hola, bienvenidos. Very nice to see you all here, braving the sun and warmth today. So I want to talk about science. I'm here today to talk about the vital role that science plays in our lives and in our democracy. Everyone, every citizen, every human being has a right to science. The right to read and understand the science that other people engage in, the right to learn the skills to do science themselves, and the right to become a scientist. At this moment in time, the relationship that democracy plays in science is under threat. There isn't true democracy in how the government uses science, and this doesn't make sense. Science does not have a political party. Data is nonpartisan. Science is about systematic study. It's about observation and experiment. But right now, certain aspects of scientific research are being hidden from the public for political gains. In fact, science is under attack. Our current government has been rolling back regulations meant to protect our health and our environment, as well as remove scientific data from public government websites. Several House representatives have written a bill to abolish the Environmental Protection Agency altogether. Just this January, the EPA was told to take down its website on climate change. This website contained publicly funded research on climate change. We paid for this research with our tax dollars, so it belongs to us. But because it showed, but this research showed that climate change is real and that it is a real and present danger. For this reason, they tried to remove this information. It is critical that the public have access to all of the information. So this information is not just for researchers, but for the general public who want to find out more about what's going on in the Arctic and what's happening on this planet that we share. By removing these research papers, they remove the ability for citizens to become better informed. And that is simply not the American way. That's not democratic. A democracy is a system of government by the whole population. And even within science, we know that blacks, Hispanics, and American Indians as a group are 23% of the U.S. population, but only 6% of the total science and engineering workforce. This needs to change. We need a more diverse scientific workforce. We need to invest in top-notch public education for everyone to make sure that strong leaders can emerge from all communities, ensuring that every voice is heard and every community is represented, both in science and in our government. Underrepresented minorities and indigenous communities are the first to be negatively impacted by policies that are not evidence-based. Women, people of color, and poor people across the board have less access to health care, and the health care that they receive is often inferior. These same populations are more likely to live near Superfund sites and brownfields. I don't know if you guys checked out the science fair, there's a map of the Superfund sites and the brownfields here in the Phoenix area. So you can check out where you live and where these sites are. But these populations are more likely to live near these types of sites where the air, the soil, or the water is polluted. We all remember the crisis in Detroit where there was lead in the water. And that's a city where 42% of the population lives under the poverty line. Or a little closer to home, the Dakota Access Pipeline where indigenous communities are going to bear the brunt of the environmental consequences of building that pipeline through their communities while petroleum companies are going to reap all the financial gain. And that's not right. Minority and indigenous people are not called to the table when it's time to make these decisions, but they are left to shoulder the brunt of the burden of health disparities, the burden of climate change and climate change related disasters that are the result of these decisions. The only solution to this problem is to have true diversity in STEM and to shape our country's public policies on evidence-based scientific research. Diversity is when a STEM field, including all of the people in the leadership, all the way from the top to the bottom, reflect the demographics of the population. It is 
impossible to achieve true diversity when the government cuts funding to the EPA, when the government cuts funding to the NIH, when the government cuts funding to the Department of Energy and to NASA. The vision of achieving true diversity in STEM needs to be the central focus of the national conversation on science. Programs to support and fund the training of domestic scientists need consistent funding to prepare the next generation of scientists. If we cut funding now, we destroy the existing scientific infrastructure and we lose a whole generation of scientists. We need to invest in public education. We spend more money on prisons than we do on schools and that is immoral. We need to build up our schools to build up our communities. I came from humble beginnings, and it is because of education that I am where I am today, an Afro-Latina female scientist with a PhD in applied mathematics. Both of my parents were immigrants to this country, and neither of my parents attended college. I am an example of how education can change a family in one generation. Education is the great equalizer. We need to amass a diverse scientific workforce to handle the challenges of the 21st century. Everyone benefits when we use research, evidence, and science to inform our public policies. Many of you might be saying, what can I do? I'm not in the government. I'm not in a position of power. But we all have a role to play in this movement. We can each make an effort to learn something new about our communities. We can learn the science behind the canal system in Phoenix. Where does that water come from? Who built the first canals in this area? Practice citizen science. Plant a garden. Organize a community garden. Get to know your neighbors. Recycle. You can run for political office yourself. Join your city council. Most importantly, get registered and go out and vote. We can all be agents for change, and this fight is going to take all of us working together if we're going to succeed.